Hi, I'm Vim with Boris FX, and in this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to work with extruded text and shapes in Title Studio for Video Studio Ultimate 10. In addition to creating dynamic 2D lower third animations, Title Studio gives Video Studio Ultimate 10 users the ability to extrude text, splines, and even EPS files to create true 3D animations. I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily recreate this 3D animation from the 2009 Star Trek film, all from within Corel, with the help of Boris FX. Title Studio. Okay, so here I am in Corel, and the first thing I want to do is add some media to my timeline. Now, I could use a regular video track, but for now, what I want to do is go to my Graphics tab. From the pull-down menu, I'm going to select Color, and then drag a white background onto my timeline. To access Title Studio, I'm going to click on my Filters tab, and drag Title Studio onto my clip. Now, I can also create an overlay track and apply Title Studio to that if I want. Now, no matter what kind of media you choose to apply Title Studio to, the next step is to double-click on the track to open up the Attributes window. Here, I can adjust the basic attributes of the clip as well as customize Title Studio. To do that, I'm going to click here and launch the built-in FX browser. Since I'm going to be creating something from scratch, I'm not going to select any presets from the browser. What I want to do is click Advanced Mode to launch the Title Studio user interface. Now, inside of Title Studio, I have my Controls and Text Entry window, my Composite window, and my Timeline. There are a number of different workspaces available, and if I want to change the layout, I can also create my own. At the moment, I've enabled multiple camera views, which include my render camera and a world camera. This allows me to quickly see not just where my objects are positioned in 3D space, but also what the final render will look like. Now, to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the default tech so I can start from scratch. I also want to make sure that I toggle off the Animate Static button. This way, I can make adjustments without automatically creating new keyframes. Once that's done, I'm going to go to my Add New Media button and import my Starfleet Insignia EPS file. Alright, that looks nice, but because it's an EPS file, I have this star section filled in, when I really want it to be cut out of the final product. To do this, I want to change the track media to Spline Object. By doing so, Title Studio will treat each section of the image as a separate spline object. If I select the Material Track and the Arrow tool, I can select either the interior or exterior spline. By holding the Shift button down, I can select them both. If both are selected, I can go to the Tools menu, select Path, and then Combine Contours. This will essentially punch a star-shaped hole in my insignia, which is exactly what I want. So this is nice, but if I spin the layer in the Position tab, I can see that it's still a flat image. I can convert it to an extrusion by clicking here and selecting Extrusion. Now, when I spin the insignia, I can see that I'm working with a fully 3D object. Okay, this is nice, but I want to add some texturing, so I'm going to select the material layer and twirl it open to reveal the default color material track. If I select this track, my control window will display material attributes. Here, I can change the material type to a number of different options, adding bump mapping and reflections, etc. For this project, I'm going to keep it simple, so I'm just going to select Texture. Now, by default, Title Studio will take the texture from my video layer, which is in this case the white graphic that I applied Title Studio to. If I'd made the solid a dark color, for instance, then my extrusion would have disappeared against the background. That's just a little something to be aware of when planning out your workflow. Anyway, I want to apply a texture to this, so with my texture track selected, I can come over here and change the track media to any image file I want. In this case, I'll choose a scratched metallic texture. Now I have some options as to how Title Studio will use this texture. By going to the Texture Modifier tab, I can adjust the X and Y scale of the texture. This can help to adjust the fine details on the surface of the object. With that done, let's start getting this insignia looking a bit more official. With the insignia track selected, I'm going to click on the Extrusion tab. Here I can adjust the depth of my extrusion as well as that of my beveling. I'll spin the object a bit so you can see what's happening here. To get this as close to the official logo as possible, I can change my bevel type to concave and reduce both the extrusion depth and the bevel amount just by a little. Next, I'm going to go to my Position tab and increase my scale. I can also take this opportunity to set up a quick animation. If I move my CTI to the first frame, I can set a linear interpolation on the spin Y parameter, and then spin the object 90 degrees. I can then scrub across the timeline. And since Title Studio automatically sets the final frame to the initial default, I can see that my effect rotates. If I want it to rotate quicker, I can always move my CTI to a new location, click Add Keyframe, and then set a new value for spin Y with a hold interpolation. Now, if I want, I can adjust the lighting to really make this scene pop. To access lighting controls, I want to select my scene container. Note that when I do, my controls window updates to display parameters for lighting and camera movement. 
With the light tab selected, I can grab my lighting interactor and position it anywhere in 3D space. This is where the world view comes in handy, especially when moving my light source in Z space. As with all other parameters, the position of my lighting is entirely keyframable. So feel free to experiment with different ways of animating that light source. It's also worth noting that I can create different types of lighting effects by switching between point, spotlight, and shadow lights. Okay, with that done, let's create a bit of text. Now there's two ways I can do this. The first is that I can click here to create a new extruded 3D text. This will open my text generator tab and I can enter any text I want. For example, Star Trek. Generally speaking, this is the quickest way to create the text I want. However, let's say that I was previously working on a 2D project and I created some standard vector text. I don't have to delete it and start over. I can simply convert it to an extrusion the same way I converted the insignia, by clicking here and selecting Extrusion. Now you'll probably notice that the text appears to be inside or behind the insignia. This is because they are currently occupying the same point in 3D space. We're going to fix that in a moment, but for now, let's just turn off the insignia layer by clicking the eye. This way, I can focus on my text. In the text generator window, I can make changes to my font, size, tracking, color, shadow, and other effects. I also have access to style and material palettes through the Windows menu. I can select a preset style or material, or I can create my own. Incidentally, if you're going for authentic, the free font Federation Classic is available online. Now, since my text is extruded, I have access to all the same parameters I had with my extruded insignia. I can select the Extrusion tab and adjust my Extrusion Depth and Beveling. With the Material Color Track selected, I can also go to my Attributes tab and change the type to Texture. As before, it will render white. But by selecting the track media, I can convert it to an image. In this case, I'll select a metallic gold texture file. Once that's done, I can turn the eye back on to see my Insignia track. Then using the World Camera, I can adjust my text in 3D space so that it appears in front of my Insignia. With that done, there's one more thing I can do here. I want to create a subtle camera zoom, but here's the thing. I have two different objects here, and I don't want to go in and individually change their positions. It's not going to look right. What I want to do is this. Just like I did with my lighting, I'm going to select the scene container and go to my camera tab. Here I can make changes to the built-in 3D camera. If I move my CTI to the first frame, I can create a linear keyframe for the zoom. Then I can move my CTI to the last frame and add a very slight camera zoom. When I play it back, there you go. Now I can continue working with my effect in Title Studio, or I can hit apply and send it back to Corel. Feel free to layer on additional effects to color correct and even add a J.J. Abrams style lens flare to really bring this effect home. And that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care.